Hello and welcome back to another end up other video. Today we are continuing our coverage of this potential severe threat in the deep south uh, looking like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I want to start off today with uh, a different model than we usually do. This is the supercell composite parameter. Basically just the chance of supercell development using cape and usually a lot of the stuff that we look at with more precise models when we're doing our final analysis of these storm systems on this channel at least so we can get this data earlier than the 60 hours before the exact time of these sphere thunderstorms so basically this is the chance of supercells developing uh, one is extremely low, that very faint blue. Uh, two to eleven, which is the darker, deeper blues, is the is a good chance, and anything above that is a very strong chance of supercell development. So, from zero Z on April first to eighteen Z April seventh, so basically uh, that equates to eight p.m. March thirty first. Eastern time to about 2 p.m. on the 7th, which is Thursday, Eastern time. So we can see that most of the supercells in that time period will be forming right along the Gulf Coast, which is very, uh, kind of corresponds to everything that we've been talking about over the past few weeks, with the highest values here being in parts of Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, northern Florida, southern Georgia. Uh, we also have some areas of higher values in parts of central Alabama, uh, southeast North Carolina, and southeast Florida. So, here is the week two accumulated supercell composite parameter, which is from... Uh, let's call that 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the 7th, which is Thursday, to 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, the 14th. Which shows the potential here for a extreme severe threat here in parts of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, maybe even Kansas, and Iowa as well. You can see some of those numbers even up here into 30. That means, you know, at the moment we're seeing extremely high likelihood of supercells forming, and that can contribute to winds, hail, uh, tornadoes as well. So we're gonna we kind of use that in, you know, input that instead of the storm prediction center for today, just to spice things up. But let's t take a look at the European model again. Uh, again, that same clipper setup with some rain in the northeast on Sunday. But then we have this next low pressure system with some snow in parts of the uh, Twin Cities and into Wisconsin. But we're more going to focus on this area right here. It kind of drops down that moisture into the deep south. Uh, and then you see here this is 0Z on the 5th, which means 8 p.m., on Monday the 4th, we start to see some thunderstorms developing in Texas and Oklahoma. Those shift into early Tuesday into Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, eventually into Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, Louisiana, and eventually another low pressure system forms here, drawing in more Gulf moisture, which is going to enhance some of these thunderstorms, and eventually this low pressure system starts to move up the coast before it moves out to sea in the northeast. Now that second week that we were talking about, I was trying to find that on here. I know that it's from the uh, GFS Ensemble. So let's see if the GFS is showing a more significant spear threat. Uh, not this coming week, but the following week. Because the GFS is showing a very similar uh, spear weather outbreak with that first system in the south, just having that low pressure system move further northwest, bringing in some more thunderstorms to areas like uh, Carolinas, Virginia, maybe even into 
uh, parts of New England and the Mid-Atlantic. But the GFS is really not showing much that beginning of the second week. So I do not know uh, what could be brewing here on that second week. So yeah, that's why take this with a grain of salt. I found it interesting that it's showing that at the moment, but uh, it does not seem like either model is showing anything for that time period. Let me just double check. Yeah, to the 13, 18Z on the 14th, which is right in there. So yeah, there, it doesn't seem like there's anything there except for that initial severe threat. But maybe this... Uh, Low pressure system behind it as well. I'm kind of just thinking out loud at the moment. But maybe this low pressure system behind it brings up some Gulf moisture and we get some sporadic thunderstorms and supercell development down in the south as well. More of a spring storm there. Maybe that's what it's seeing. Uh, it could also be seeing maybe just some normal pop-up showers. Let's check the, uh, the temperature. Let's see. For that time period... It seems like during that period of time, the temperatures down in the south will be, yeah, fairly high. You can see that that kind of correlates. So it might be just those typical afternoon thunderstorms that are going to be very likely to occur in parts of the south as we continue to see a warming trend. That's probably what it's seeing. I mean, it seems like, wow. Close to 90 degree days across much of the south in April. And there's a sharp cutoff line too from, you know, 70s to 50s in parts of the central U.S. So, we could be seeing an upcoming pattern here with a lot of severe thunderstorms. And even if it's sporadic, it could be serious. So, I'll keep an eye on it, but... That is all the information that I have for today. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss another weather update. But that is all I have for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.